Hi guys, so I want to show you this LFO tool trick allowing you to create a really, really tight bottom end with the correct amount of space in it. So I've got a new remix that came out um, on Louis LaRoche's label Ever After Records. It's Oh Yeah, Something's Missing featuring Matilda and Funks. Um, so give me a little blast from here. Okay, so it's, you can see it's got lots of different sections. It's very musical, quite a lot going on, quite busy. So it's vitally important with this track that I manage to keep control of the low end and have lots of space in the low end. If there's too many low frequencies and they're too overpowering, think of your speaker is trying to create, you know, 50 to 80 cycles per second and upwards for the, you know, the kick drum, got a low mid territory. So what the speaker is essentially having to do is create these really really low pulsating frequencies you know very slow movements of the speaker cone at the same time as the mid-range and the high frequencies and if you have too many of those low frequencies it affects the efficiency that the speaker is able to create all the frequencies so it kind of has a ripple effect up to the frequency range so if there's too many low frequencies then it takes away a lot of the headroom of the mix stop things being clear and punchy so it's really important that you get that low frequency kind of space right and make sure you have the correct amount of low frequencies. Because this is quite a busy track with lots of musical elements, which is exactly how I wanted it to be, it was even more important than usual to make sure that the bass was sitting in a nice place. And I think if you listen, hopefully... It sounds like the bass and the kick have a very definite space to them. So let's jump across and have a look at the actual project. Now this is the production project, which is a complete mess. <laughs> Nothing named, everything a bit all over the place, which is exactly how I like to work when I'm producing, because I don't want to kind of um, lose the creative flow at any point. Then I actually bounce things down, create stems and do a proper mix down. But anyway, I wanted to show you the bass and the kick a little bit. So the low kick portion, which is layered with some more vintage authentic kind of samples but the low portion is created using kick 2 from sonic academy and the reason that i use that is that i have the ability to really create the tail of the kick drum that i want making sure that it tails out to the point that i want it to which is about 128 milliseconds and if we want to get really geeky um, let's get our music math plugin up or app so 120 beats per minute what did I say? 130 milliseconds, 128 was it? Something like that. Um, so that is around a sixteenth note. So basically the kick drum is lasting, the tail of it is lasting around a, a sixteenth note. Now I didn't do this using music math, I did it by ear, but it's interesting that it seems to have kind of worked out being around a sixteenth note. So that's another way you can do it if you're not sure. And this is where monitoring is so important because if you have an imperfect room, an imperfect space, then you can't actually tell what's going on in your low end. That's why headphones are really important because they take away the actual effect the room has. Um, so that's something to bear in mind as well. So I do a lot of this checking on, on headphones as well as using my studio monitors. So that was the first thing, get the kick tail so it's not too, too long and too overlapping. But the next thing was this. So where is the bass? Let's just find the massive patch that the bass is playing on. So this is the one drawback of not being organized when you make your tracks. Okay, so it's up here. There we go. Um, so the massive patch, what I did was I fine-tuned the envelope first of all to make sure that it had the right kind of volume contour to it. And what I did here was create an initial attack and then a decay down to a sustain level, which was lower. And what I'm trying to do there is tricking the ear 
to think there's more bass than there actually is because the attack portion is actually peaking higher than the sustain portion so rather than just going you know and having a kind of a straight line for the sustain we're saying here's the bass level but then actually take it down a little bit and i don't think you notice the fact necessarily that there is that volume difference but again that's meaning there's less low frequencies in there now what i did next and that's really what i wanted to get across in this video was use lfo tool and i did that as an audio unit midi controlled effect au midi controlled effect in logic now there's ways of doing this in other daws but obviously i use logic so i selected um LFO tool for that menu there rather than an effects plugin. What that means is it can actually have MIDI sent to it. Now what I did was I copied down exactly the same MIDI that was playing the actual bass part, which is here. So let's just solo the actual bass, preferably on a portion that's actually playing. Okay, so that's the massive bass patch, yeah? But I turned the volume down of that one, and on the AU MIDI controlled effect, with LFO tool loaded as an AU MIDI control effect, I added in the sidechain slot the output of the massive bass channel. Okay, there it is. Then I created a kind of volume LFO curve for the track. And what I did was I switched on MIDI note retrigger using the MIDI from the massive bass patch. And what that means is every single time the MIDI plays, it's triggering this LFO shape to clamp down the volume of the bass. Let me show you what I mean. Can you see this re-triggering? This line's moving with the bass MIDI. Now if I take it off by bringing the amount down, you'll hear there's a subtle difference. Let's exaggerate it. Now neither one is right or wrong, but I decided that, I think I had it on 44, that at 44 I had a little bit more space in the low end, a little bit more space in the track in general, and I preferred the way that sounded. And if you think about it, this LFO tool, LFO shape, is far more customizable than Massive's envelopes are. So actually it gives me a way of having a far more intricate kind of shape <laughs> Not that you'd ever want that shape necessarily, but you see it gives me a far more intricate control over the envelope of the bass. And with fades in there, sorry, uh, um, smooth slopes in there is what I meant. We could do this on the kick drum too, to even further tune the kick drum tail as well. So it's a really, really useful way of having some more precise control over your low end. So having that aligned with the kick drum where I'm able to change the kick drum tail, it really gives you very, very precise control over your low end. And if you're then checking it in a very good pair of headphones or in a perfect room if that's what you have, if not in, in your headphones, you just make sure you get the right amount of space for the kick and the bass so they have their own kind of little worlds to inhabit within the mix and that will ripple upwards and mean you'll have a, a clearer, tighter and better overall mix down. So guys I hope that tip was useful. Um, if you like the uh, the remix please um, go and uh, stream it and listen to it and like it and all that kind of stuff and I will do another video in a minute on something I wanted to show you on the master and how you can use compression and expansion together to bring out your master. Cool, thanks for watching.